Hey everyone, I'm Klaus. I'm the CEO of Snowshoe. Um, we are a startup that is currently located in Madison, Wisconsin. Has anyone here ever been to Madison? Yeah. All right. All the cool people just raised their hands. Uh, so we take a step back about two years. We were making iPhone apps for grocery stores. And everyone in the crowd just went to sleep. Uh, no, we, so, so you, everyone, raise your hand if you have like a Safeway card or something like that. Yeah, yeah. So we were making apps that replace those. And that was fun and cool, and we started as a UW, as a startup out of the University of Wisconsin. We won a business plan competition. We were building apps. We had customers. And then we realized that uh, the cash registers that are installed at your local grocery store, for the most part, were invented by <coughs> Satan. And they run, they run a, a language, for, a lot of them run a language called IBM 4130, which is older than I am. Uh, and so when you're trying to integrate uh, uh, any type, anything with them, frankly, um, and do it in a scalable way so that you can like easily duplicate it from one store to the next, uh, it's really hard and basically, well, it's essentially impossible to do that in a, in a way that scales for a startup. So we were building these smartphone apps that needed to interact and, and had coupons and all this cool kind of cool functionality that needed to be executed at the point of sale. And essentially, we couldn't integrate with the point of sale systems to process the transactions that we were trying to, to use as the main justification for using our apps. And that made us sad. Uh, so <laughs> we started thinking about this problem, and we realized that instead of trying to bash our heads against the wall of these point of sale system manufacturers or the service providers or you know, figuring out how to get in through that system, we needed something that sat completely outside the point of sale allowed us to authenticate coupon redemptions in that case. Um, but, but the more we thought about it, the more we realized that really uh, interacting with getting your phone to interact with systems in the real world is, is kind of a hard thing. Uh, there's a lot of solutions that are, is that working at all? There we go. There's a lot of solutions that are out there. Um, NFC only works on a certain number of Android and Windows phones. Um, QR codes suck. Uh, Bluetooth, low power Bluetooth only works on some iOS phones and then not Android phones. Basically, there's a lot of communication protocols out there that allow for, for you to authenticate transactions or authenticate uh, place, interaction, and, and uh, timing for mobile phone transactions, but none of them really satisfy the entire market and are intuitive and easy to use. So we invented something that is, and we call it the snowshoe stamp. This is one right here. Who can see it? Let's hear it for hardware. Yeah, hardware. So, so this is a block of aluminum. There is nothing else in it. I'll say that again. It's a block of aluminum. There's no batteries. There's no power. There's no circuit board. There's, there's nothing other than a block of aluminum. And it's been precision milled on the bottom so that it has five points. And those five points protrude from the bottom. Now, I don't know if you heard when I said this is the snowshoe stamp. Raise your hand if you have used an inked stamp at some point in your life. Who's not raising their hand? <laughs> um, so, so the way this works is to authenticate a transaction, you literally touch it to the capacitive screen of a smartphone, and the phone detects the specific location of the five points that are on the bottom of the stamp. And we use those five points to basically prove that you're interacting with that stamp. And those five points are in a unique configuration on every single stamp. Uh, so we can make millions of these things that are uniquely identifiable because the capacitive touch sensor array on your smartphone is really sensitive. It's a really precise instrument. Um, and so we can basically make millions of these little blocks of aluminum that are really durable. You can run through a dishwasher. You can even run through a freaking autoclave. Uh, you can, I've run them over with a bus and they still work. Um, and yet they can do things like authenticate a loyalty card transaction for a uh, coffee shop. How does that work? I'm glad you asked. Uh, so here is a app that is running for a coffee shop in Madison, Wisconsin right now. Oh gosh. Um, if I want to buy a coffee and get a punch on my punch card, they keep a stamp at the point of sale next to the cash register. I pay them for a cup of coffee and I say, hey, here's my app. It's my punch card. Can I get a punch? And they say, sure, you just paid us. They stamp the screen on my phone and it submits those coordinates to our web service for authentication. My internet is not a 
Wi-Fi, so it's running very slow, but it runs much quicker when you have a good internet connection. That doesn't, that's not the only thing we can do, though. And very quickly, I'm going to switch to the iPad here. Okay, I have a green screen, oh, and everyone's really impressed. Um, so I showed you guys the aluminum version of this. Uh, these cost us about $20 each to make at our current production volume. That can come down a little bit, but it, um, so we said, hey, can we make them cheaper? And the answer was yes. Uh, so we bought ourselves a 3D printer, <laughs> and we can now make them out of conductive plastic. It's a like special conductive filament. Uh, and that means that not only can we make them really cheap, because this is about 17 cents worth of plastic, but we can make them in all sorts of really fun, weird shapes and sizes that fit the specific application that somebody's using, right? So in particular, I have a big round one here, and my green screen is disappearing again. So, the reason I have this green screen up, this is a stamp interface. If I touch it with any random five points, it submits those into our server algorithm. Uh, and if my iPad is actually online, it'll turn red. Yay! This is not the right stamp configuration to authenticate this app. Now I take my big circular one, and I touch that to the screen, and oh, it's green again. That's great. But not only is it green, it's now showing a dial. And the reason this stamp is so giant and round is because I can rotate it and that dial changes, right? So not only am I authenticating my identity into this system, but I'm then using a really intuitive touch gesture, or not touch gesture, a really intuitive gesture with the stamp itself to communicate additional information. Think about a two-factor authentication system for a touchscreen laptop or a, or a tablet. Instead of carrying around, your, you know, having to go through a text message system through your cell phone or having to carry around an extra dongle that uh, has a battery or could break or isn't dishwasher safe, all you have to carry around is a simple piece of plastic that costs 17 cents, and you touch it to your screen, possession of the stamp itself is one factor of authentication, and then you enter in a combination, just like you did in your high school gym class locker. Uh, and that code is the second factor of authentication to prove you are who you say you are and give you access to that system. There's a ton of different applications. We won the TechCrunch Disrupt Hackathon out here in San Francisco in uh, September by using this as the authentication protocol for a Wi-Fi actuated door lock. There's all sorts of applications for the Internet of Things, for smart uh, Wi-Fi or, or Internet-enabled houses, all sorts of stuff, and really we are looking for developers who want to build on this platform. I have about 20 of these nice, pretty, beautiful aluminum stamps with me. If any of you are coders or work for startups that think you would ha might have a use for this, come find me. I will give you some of our development hardware tonight. Questions? And if you can also remember to repeat the questions too. Yeah, yeah. Does it work on Android phone or on iPhone? The, we have SDKs, uh, so software development kits, for developers to build apps natively in Android and iOS. But everything I've shown you tonight is actually running through a mobile web page that works right now on iOS, Android, Windows Mobile, Windows 8 touchscreen devices, and BlackBerry Tab. So basically anything running a WebKit browser or anything running uh, Internet Explorer 10. Yes? You said Windows Mobile, is it Windows Phone? It is Windows Phone, yes. Sorry, not Windows Mobile, that's a little pop. So if someone can take a picture of it, then they can create one that is identical, right? Yep, so the, the question is if somebody can take a picture of it, then they can create one that is identical. And the answer to that is kind of. Uh, if you can exactly mimic the physical characteristics of this, yes, it'll still work. If you, in the same way, if you can exactly mimic the physical characteristics of a mag stripe on a credit card, 
you can create an exact copy of that credit card and still use it. The question is, how hard is it to do so? You cannot simply like ink this onto a piece of paper and then come back with a caliper and measure the this location of the points. I've tried that. It does not get precise enough to spoof the actual stamp itself unless you are far better at geometry than I am, um, which many of you may be. <laughs> um, but but it's it's not quite that easy because it really is is down to fractions of a millimeter uh, in terms of the placement and, and getting it precise enough that it still works and satisfies the algorithm that we're running on our server. Uh, at least we have not had anybody able to crack it yet. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So if you make these parts with a 3D printer, why can I not get a 3D scanner with a 3D printer? Yeah. That you could probably do if you have a 3D scanner that's that's precise enough. And again, then the question is, uh, what is it that we are authenticating in this transaction? And is it cheaper for you to buy a, you know, say we're doing this for payments. Is it cheaper for you to buy a Mac Stripe credit card reader, which Stripe sells for $7, or to buy a 3D uh, scanner, which I think MakerBots is probably going to cost a couple of grand when it comes out. Um, an Xbox Connect is, with a hack on it, can do it for maybe 200 or 300 bucks. So. There's, there's ways to spoof any authentication system out there. The benefit of ours is that it's really intuitive to use. It works on basically every device that's by multi-touch capable. And it doesn't have any electric or moving parts. It's, it's literally just a piece of conductive plastic or metal. And so it's really durable and, and you can't break it. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, absolutely. There's ways to spoof every system that's out there. Ours is pretty darn secure, certainly way more secure than a lot of things people are using right now, like QR codes. But at the same time, it's way more intuitive to use than most of those systems, and it works on pretty much every device. Last question. Uh, the purple jacket. Um, I so um, thus far, our business model's been really fun because it's basically been to go to hackathons and try to win them using our technology. Um, that doesn't scale too much further. Um, but, but actually, that is an important part of this. Right now, we're a developer-facing company. So we try to interact with as many uh, early-stage startups, as many developers at, at larger corporations as possible, get the technology in front of them, and then infiltrate the individual verticals where we have specific application and, and we feel like we really can go. And then, frankly, we've had a lot of verticals brought to us by people who have seen us at a hackathon or seen an article about us or something like that and, and, and thought of how they could use us in, in their day-to-day -day life or in their business. Um, certainly, we have plans to go after specific verticals in a much more focused way of moving forward. And, and that's sort of what we'll be doing in a big way over the next six months. Um, and certainly, there are things we can do to get in front of groups like this far more often uh, to get this technology out there. And a big part of that is, uh, frankly, there aren't groups like this in Madison, Wisconsin. So we're in the process of moving out here. Um, so yeah, we'll be here within a month and a half or two, depending on a lot of factors. But, um, but yeah, so so definitely, uh, we, we try to get in front of as many developers as possible and then uh, show them the technology and get them to, to apply it. Uh, into the things that they're already coding.